Okay, I'm on a roll here. Praise God. Okay, let me keep going here on this. Again, I have to read a lot of this stuff because of the lead poison and stuff uh, to keep my flow and keep going. And uh, a lot of times I like simply to have the Bible do the, do the talking instead of rather than Marty's opinion. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep going here. This is part two, I guess. <laughs> the law, the Torah, is it still in effect? Is the law still in effect, people? Not just the Ten Commandments, but what part of the, the Torah? And I'm, I'm working on that, okay? Hebrews 13.8 makes it very clear. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3.6, for I, the Lord, do not change. His character, his integrity, his whole entire purpose for man, and the reason we're on, on earth. Uh, my mom is 85 years old and she's going into dementia. Uh, I sat with her a few weeks ago, or a week ago, or whatever it was, and I looked at her pictures of her graduation. So here's her graduation picture from high school, and, and here she's sitting here with me, 85 years. And here's my dad and him marriage and you know got all this life and I'm going God what's the purpose of this why is my mom here what 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 what's from this life point to this life point what was the purpose and I'm sitting there like why was God why do we create it God created the heavens and the earth he created the heavens and one third of the angels fell they had free will were they tempted they, they, they rebelled against God. So it's like, okay, wait a second. Let's put man down here. He wants to replenish the earth. He wants to replenish us or heaven and stuff. And the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. So he takes and he comes down, lives with man, and he redeems us and works with it. He wants us to freely, willingly, throughout all of our lives, whatever happens, to learn to be able to walk with him and be freed from it with his son so that he can trust us to now be in heaven and not have the same thing happen again. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that, Marty. Jesus died to affect us, but we have free will. He designed it to where we can freely live totally apart from him or freely with him. He did everything he can to help us make it through this. But, anyway. So I see that, and I, I talk to people about some of that stuff, and there's a whole other story behind that if you look at it, but anyway. Acts 24, 14, is the law and Torah still in effect? I'm working on this. Acts 24, 14, but this I confess to you, that according to the way, this is Paul, the way, that's what we originally was called, the way, which they call a set, the sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and the writing written in the prophet and written in the prophets. This is Paul saying this. He's a New Testament Christian. He says, I believe everything laid down by the law and the written in the prophets. Psalm 19:7 in the Old Testament, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. How's the law? You're, you're going to see a whole gamut of this as I'm sharing with this. Romans 7, 4. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another, to him who has raised from the dead. Romans 7, 2. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. That's what the law says. In order for her to obey it, the key is now, accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. She was under the law now. Before, the law said, you're fine, you're living in obedience. But as soon as she breaks it, she's under the law. If she lives with another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. That law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. You see how the law clearly defines what righteousness is and how righteousness should be lived out. Jeremiah 3.1. That's where he got it from. In Romans, 
Paul is quoting the Old Testament. Most of the New Testament is quotations from the Old Testament. But nobody teaches the Old Testament. Nobody's into the Old Testament and the law. Jeremiah 3.1, if a man divorces his wife and goes down or goes from him and becomes another man's wife, will he return to her? Would not that land be greatly polluted? You who have played the harlot with many lovers, and would you return to me, declares the Lord. And he's talking about Judah or Israel. I can't remember which one of the two he was talking about in that thing, but he was using the marriage thing as an analogy of the law. Galatians 3 Verse 10, 11, and 13. For all who rely on the laws, on the works of the law, are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. I'm getting to that, just hang in there. Verse 13, Galatians 13, 3, 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. My whole life ahead before I got saved or being saved, being transformed, committed my life to Christ, I was under the curse of the law. He set me free. Now I'm no longer under the law because he freed me, but I am to obey the law because I don't want to get back under the curse of the law. Obeying the law brings blessings. Obeying God brings blessings. Disobeying brings curses. If you knew anything about the Old Testament, you'd understand that. 1 Timothy 1, verse 8 and 9. Now we know that the law is good. Whoa. I thought, what would we just read? So I'm trying to find a balance in here, people a theme, a ribbon of truth throughout the Bible. If one uses it lawfully, the law is good if you use it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless, the disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, etc. The law is our standard. Do you want to be under the law, or do you want to be obeying and watching the law? Say, so using it lawfully. Psalms 119. This whole entire chapter of Psalms, and many of the Psalms, tell, is all about the law. Blessed are those whose way is blameless. How can they be blameless? Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who way, their way is blameless. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Who walk in the law. The law's not gone, guys. It's still around. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. How am I going to be complete and be trained in righteousness if I don't understand the law, if I don't understand the Torah, if I don't understand what God's, what parts of the, the Old Testament apply for today? 2 Timothy, oh, I already got that. Proverbs 4.2 For I give you good precepts, do not forsake my teachings. That's interesting. He gives you good precepts. No, I didn't look up the word precept. <laughs> James 2.8 If you really fulfill, oh, there's that word. We just had that verse, remember? If you really fulfill or do the royal law according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. Where in the world did James get that from? Oh, <laughs> I'm being smart. He got it from Leviticus 19, chapter 19, 8b. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Levitical 19, 34. You shall love him as yourself. Stranger. Strangers. There's a whole part of the verse, but I didn't want to write all that out. John 7, 16 and 17. So Jesus answered them. My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone's will, if anyone, my will, if my will is to do the God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or my own authority. How will I know if Jesus' teaching is really from God? How will I know the right things? By going back and studying the law. 1 John 2, 4 and 5, whoever says I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. 
Anybody who tells me that I don't have to search out the Torah and I don't have to search out the law of God, I don't listen to them because they're liars. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that the, we are in him, Jesus. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which Jesus walked. Right there should be the answer to anybody's question. 1 John 3, or 1 John 2, verse 6. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he, Jesus, walked. Jesus said he obeyed the law. He obeyed all the law. I want to find out what law applies to me. Right there it is. He obeyed the Torah. He obeyed the law. The New Testament hadn't been written yet, folks. Whoever says that he's, I call myself a believer. I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm going to stop calling myself a Christian because that's a bunch of watered down garbage. I'm a disciple of Christ. I am on the way. I am working, not working toward. I am being transformed and obeying God by his spirit and guided, guided by his spirit. Praise God. Matthew 11.30 For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why would he say that? My yoke is easy and the burden is light. I thought he, he bears all our burdens. The law, the lover of the lawgiver. As I give my heart to God, the law is no longer a burden. A law is freedom. My grandkids, I've said this before probably, when people, when my grandkids are here and their parents say, no, you can't have pop after seven o'clock or eight o'clock. It's not my law, guys. It's your parents' law. I, I love the lawgivers, so this is the law. You ain't going to get pop after 7 o'clock or whatever your parents say. It is great being grandparents because the, the parents set the rules, and I follow them. It's freedom. 1 John 3, 4. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Until we study the law in the Old Testament, how can we know what lawlessness is? Your pastors? Half of them have no clue. Half of them don't even study the Old Testament. They need to be into the Word. They need to understand how the New Testament is written and where it came from. I need to do all this stuff, guys. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, for the spirits to see, for the spirits to see whether they are from God or from false prophets have gone out into the world. How do I know that what my preacher, what teachers, what on the radio, how do I know? I search out the Word of God. I search out the Old Testament. I search out the laws. Right now, a lot of this stuff that I'm sharing with you, people flippantly say because they just were taught that they're parrots. They're parroting it. Have they studied it out thoroughly? They couldn't have studied it out because they wouldn't be saying it. I don't want to say it anymore. Okay, last one here. Not last one, but the last part of it. These two kind of tie together. I am not under the law, but I'm under favor. Start using the word favor. Quit using grace. Grace doesn't know sprinkly. Favor is based on relationship. Jesus Christ brought me back because I have a relationship with him. I now go to the Father. I ask the Father's forgiveness. I ask the Father's direction. I ask the Holy Spirit to empower me and walk with me. See, that's favor. I'm not under the law. Titus 2, 11 and 15. I'm hoping this will explain it to you. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all. Well, we know not everybody's saved. The availability is for all. It's available to all. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, our old ways. And to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. Well, how do we know what's upright? How do we know what's godly? Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us from the law, all lawlessness. He came to redeem us from lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. You see how important this is? Titus is a powerful book. Who gave himself to redeem us from hell? from a, a miserable, no, from lawlessness 
and to purify for himself a people. He wants to do that, but we have to obey. Do you declare these things and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Rebuke with all authority. People say, oh, Marty, you just got to love people. You just got to love people. I can't allow them to live and follow lies. Someone's got to warn them. Lawlessness and the purify who have zealous for good works. For good works. That's the fruit of it. James 4, 6 through 10. But if he gives favor, therefore it says, God opposes the proud but gives favor to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. See, look at these conditions. These are conditions, people. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you got to submit yourself to God. How do we submit ourselves to God? We find out what the Torah says and we find out what the law is and what we're supposed to do. Draw near to God. See, it doesn't say God draws near to you. It says we're supposed to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Always note that. People say, oh no, God picks and chooses who he wants. No, he doesn't. Whoever responds to him, he goes after him. Because <laughs> you got a little glimmer, dude. You want to help? I, I'm willing to help you. Praise the Lord. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. A lot of church people are double-minded. I used to be double-minded. Oh, I think I'm still going to go to heaven. I don't think I'm quite so bad. I don't want to really deal with this area of my life. If God brings an error to your life, people, like he's doing me with the Torah and the law, I don't care what anybody says. He is bringing something to me and wants me to go to a deeper, more intimate level with him of holiness and righteousness and blame. I want to find out what that is. And then I will, I will be responsible for it. I will be responsible for it. I'm not going to make my whole family do all this. So I've got to figure this out for myself and figure out how to live it out. I should have learned this a long time ago. Unfortunately, the church doesn't teach all this stuff. Okay, where are we at? In this regard, James poses the proud, resists the devil, draw near to God, cleanse your hand. Oh, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before God and he will exalt you. Be wretched, mourn and weep. In the last months, I was telling somebody the other day, I don't think I have the joy of the Lord, but I have an incredible peace inside. And I consistently, continuously have the Holy Spirit bring something to light or something, just a rhema, a specific word. He makes it very, very clear to me. And I have been mourning. I'm so sick of so few people wanting to get closer to God. All people worry about is not losing their salvation. All they worry about is, oh, I just want to go to heaven. Oh, I just want to feel better. And all pastors want to do is make people feel better. Their misery is to get them to be broken, to be humbled before God and cry out for God. Quit babying them. A sinner is someone who broke God's law and they're criminals. Yes, they need Jesus' love, but they got to see their need for it first. You completely take away the Word of God, the power of it. I'm working on a thing on prayer, too. There's a thing uh, of three or four different things, a great teaching on prayers that I've run across, and I'm trying to put those in an outline. And then also, uh, hell. I taught on hell here a while back at the rehab place. And I haven't thought about that for a long time, but I ran across some teachings, and then I looked up all the scriptures. I searched out everything the guy said. I understood the context, and it's powerful. There's several people crying. Hell's a real place. Goats will be going to hell. Those are Christians, born again people who refuse to obey God. They think they got their eternal security packet. They want to live selfishly for themselves. God's going to say, hey, you're out of here, dude. I'm working on that teaching. It's very clear in the Bible. Look and define the words. It's scary. Galatians 5, 3 through 5. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision. This is Paul. This is powerful. To every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. If I go back and try to obey all the laws to get to heaven, it ain't going to happen. But what if they do? What if I decide to do it man's way? What if I decide to do it what the church says? He says, you are severed from Christ. You who would be justified in the law, you have fallen away from grace. You can't fall away from grace if you weren't saved, if you weren't under favor. You can't be severed from Christ if you weren't part of Christ. And the, the true vine explains that very clearly. 
For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. The hope. The hope is by everything that we've done as we learn as God reveals the law and the Taurus. I want to walk righteously before Him. My hope is for righteousness so I can please the Father. Glorify the Son. Praise God. The law is good, people. It's incredible. I got several more things. I'm not going to do it tonight. Um, get into your word. Study the context. Study the whole theme of it in the Bible. It amazes me, even when I run into people who, who define a word. Say, see Marty, see Marty. But that same word is used in multiple places. When you see how it's used, you can understand now what it means because our language has changed so many times and the Bible oh yeah I got something in the Bible too that I want to show you that the church uses and uh, I can't think of where it's at now it, it, it's in parentheses and it's not it's, gee, it isn't, it isn't, in 1926 from Bibles from 1926 on has this added in the Bible from there any old Bibles from before as far back as they can record and even the Greek Bibles it's not even in there but people quote this verse and it's out of context because there's a word of sentence that is incorrect. And as soon as I can remember where it's at, I'll show it to you. Praise God. Amen. Thank you.